I'm Rebecca Dawson and thanks for joining me for a few moments today. I'm delighted to share with you a simple, profound and quite revolutionary view offered to us through some channeling with the Masters in a recent seminar series we did about what the shift of consciousness for humanity and the earth actually is. So I look forward to you diving into in the next 15 to 20 minutes or so and looking at how it is that the masters illustrate in a very simple way what it is that is actually happening for us what's happening for the planet what it means and how it impacts and brings us more possibilities more views and more experiences than we've ever had before enjoy so in this way, we wish to explain to you or to illustrate for you our view of what this movement between third dimensional and fifth dimensional reality is about so that you can begin to conceptualize within your own perception a beautiful unfolding rather than a cataclysmic shift. So we wish to illustrate for you our view. If you consider that anything that you view within your reality is based upon a light or a light wave, anything that you experience within your perceivable reality exists within a particular bandwidth of vibration. What you experience in your third dimensional reality is a version of all that is. And the denser your reality, in other words, the narrower the bandwidth of vibration, that will actually dictate, that will actually denote what it is that you can view. So within your third dimensional reality, as you have understood it, you have a particular range of frequency that you can perceive within. And this third dimensional bandwidth of frequency is what denotes the reality you exist within. Any perception of your reality is based upon what can be perceived, understood, or conceptualized within this bandwidth of perception. So, even if you may have an existence that there is something other than your third dimensional reality, this is what is observable. When consciousness begins to expand, it begins to expand and in both directions. So when there is a paradigm shift or a dimensional reality shift for a collective consciousness, or even for what you believe yourself to be as an individual point of consciousness, the bandwidth begins to expand. And so fifth dimensional reality widens the aperture of what is perceivable because the bandwidth of frequency expands. This is the expansion of your own consciousness. Now, as you can see here, as consciousness begins to expand and moves into a fifth dimensional spectrum of perception, you can see that third dimensional reality does not cease to exist. You now embrace third dimensional reality and move beyond it. So here in this, there is no sense of separation. You do not move out of one and into the other. You merely expand to encompass more. And this is an evolution of consciousness within your earth reality. If you were to move into seventh dimensional reality, that bandwidth would widen even more. And so you would have the ability to see even more beyond your discernible sense of reality. If you consider what is observable from Earth in your space time, you can see that within third dimensional reality, you have a limited view of the cosmos. 
the more that human consciousness expands, the more you can see, the more you have accessibility to it. So the earth reality appears to be less contained. Earth appears to be a part of something greater. And the same is for the individual experience. The more you move beyond the experience and the perception of third dimensional reality, the more it appears you are a part of something greater, the more connectivity and coherence and unification you begin to feel. So the expansion of human consciousness within your earth reality does not move from one paradigm to another. It merely broadens. Just as a light will go through a keyhole and out the other side, depending on how expanded the consciousness is that's viewing as you, from you, through you, will depend on how wide the aperture or spectrum of vibration is that you can view. This is why humans will say, I want to raise my vibration so that I can experience more. Your vibration is raising and therefore you are viewing more. But one must be cautious because you are not causing your vibration to raise so that you can see more. Your vibration is raising and therefore you can see more. This is very important to understand because the earth shift is a part of something much greater. This means that there is less emphasis and focus and pressure on you to make it happen, but more there is an allowing and a sense of grace and a sense of comfort and ease in experiencing it happen. So what we find very interesting about the third dimensional reality is that you can see, first of all, it's a very narrow bandwidth. And this is also true for what you can observe as spectrum of light and color and sound and so on. The narrower the bandwidth, the narrower the range of what you can perceive and experience. What you discover about third dimensional reality is it is very much like a mirror effect. Because this narrow bandwidth of light has a reflective quality to it. This is what we call the mirror or the reflection. And so what happens is that you have the same images, the same concepts, the same experiences, the same histories and so on that move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, action and reaction, repetition, slight changes, of course, permutations, versions of the same light bouncing back and forth. And this is very important to understand because your third dimensional reality, what is very specific to it is this sense of history repeating itself. It's a sense of repetition of pattern, repetition of thought, repetition of karmic trauma patterns, repetition of nuances in your own behavior, repetition of action. And so you find yourself within a reality that becomes very focused upon regulation, repetition, order, and so on. This is very relevant, of course, in terms of our topic of relationship, because what this means is that how you relate to another, whether it be a partner or a colleague, or a child, or a parent, or a neighbor, or so on, is it's very reflective, like a mirror. So not only do you have repetitious themes that come up in all of your relationships, not only do you have repetitious experiences within your relationships, you also have this reflective quality. And the reflective quality is how humans have come to understand the value of relationships. Even the most conscious humans will say, well, this human over here is reflecting something back to me about myself. And I am reflecting something to them about themselves. And so there is this exchange balance paradigm that's created where the game becomes, how can we move into balance with this? There's also a sense of negotiation because you 
are trying to align with the image in the mirror or trying to have the image in the mirror align to you. And so many relationships can be viewed as complementary, but it's very difficult to sustain a sense of complementary because the way in which light reflects here, even if you believe that you enjoy the complementary nature of opposition within relationships, you will ultimately seek to replicate yourself. And this is where relationships become very transactional. This is where one partner likes the other partner to be like them, or you try to be like your partner and so on. But what's very interesting here about this mirror effect is that is also what underlies the karmic principle. Because if light keeps echoing back and forth, you're going to keep getting the same experiences over and over and over again. They might appear slightly differently with different people or different times or different sets of circumstances, but the theme tends to be the same. Now, this is also very interesting because one may ask, well, why is it that this reflective nature of reality sits here. This reflective nature of reality is held into place just like the opaque backing on a mirror. The opaque backing on the mirror is what we would call fourth dimensional construct. And it sits in place like a membrane. And what that membrane does is it contains or reinforces this cycle of repetition or echo that it continues to allow the consciousness and the light and the sound to echo back and forth. It doesn't really go anywhere, which is why pr real progress or real sense of evolution has been somewhat elusive to humans. In fact, we would say that evolution is a theory that is not really understood by humanity because they've only been able to understand it within a mirror paradigm. Now, this fourth dimensional membrane is what you may refer to as time. Because the construct of time is a construct of limitation that allows this reflective action and reaction to be contained. Interesting, agree? Interesting. The adherence to time and the belief in time is what maintains this mirror reality. Now the mirror reality is also what we would call the holographic reality. Where image is everything. And different tessellations, different versions, different permutations of imagery, all moving, all changing, but the essence of it never really changes, is what fills your space. So it's like being in a kaleidoscope. You can get movement all the time and it appears that you're evolving and it appears that things are changing, but it's really just reformation and, and new slightly different versions of the same themes, the same concepts, the same beliefs that keep circulating around and around. So there's an appearance of movement and progress, but you're not really going anywhere. And this is, in, in essence, where humanity has been for about 300,000 years. And it's what enables this concept or the experience of what you call the karmic cycle to continue to exist. So the more conscious you become and the more you step into your own awareness, you begin to move into meditative practices. And indeed, there are many teachers at this time who are speaking about the importance of prayer presence and being in the now moment, which allows you to actually move beyond the fourth dimensional membrane for moments, 
so that you can begin to experience your own expanded consciousness. And for many who are in the now moment or the present moment, you can sense that there's more to be perceived. Colors become richer. You notice sounds you didn't notice before. You have a greater sense of presence and your perceivable view of reality begins to expand. It broadens. There's a richer, deeper sense to your environment because you're actually now moving beyond the limitation of this fourth dimensional time membrane and you're now beginning to see what's really there because you've only been able to see a very, very, very limited view of what's available. So as you begin to move into fifth dimensional reality, you begin to experience things that you don't necessarily have evidence for, but you also begin to consider, I'm not really interested in having exchange relationships with people. I'm not really interested in negotiation. I'm not really interested in learning the same lessons anymore. I'm not really interested even in compatibility. So for many of you, you're becoming quite disillusioned with relationship because you don't want it to be a workable arrangement. And you're also, many of you, the more conscious you're becoming, you're actually becoming quite disillusioned with the image of yourself because you realize that what you've been negotiating with with the other person is all based on image. It's based on the reflection of who you are in the mirror, which has nothing to do with the essence of you or the reality of you. So you've been tessellating with imagery, not really participating in the truest sense of who you are as a creative being. So the disillusionment with this type of relationship is very natural as you begin to expand your perception into fifth dimensional reality. A fifth dimensional reality of lesson ones is not about completion. It's not about rearrangement to find perfect alignment. It's not about negotiation and lessons and trying to correct what are perceivable errors in the past in order to bring about union. Because this is what happens when you look in a mirror. You try to correct your image. Does it match how I feel today? How do I get it to line up? How do I get the image or the reality I see in front of me to reflect how I truly feel that I am? And so many of you at this time, as you become more consciousness, are saying, well, the life that is around me, it doesn't match how I feel about myself. And yet I have been diligent in my practices. I have been doing everything that I can to raise my vibration. What's going wrong for me? Why isn't my reality or my life matching the truth of who I feel myself to be? So this is where relationships become very different. Because when you become disillusioned with wanting to create that match with another person and negotiate so that your partner or your colleague or your child or your reality matches what you think your identity is, you begin to move into all I'm really interested in is something else. Give me something else. There must be something else. There must be something new. And this is where you find yourself in the new fifth dimensional bandwidth of frequency, where it's no longer about correction and completion, it's now about beginnings. And when you move into this energy of beginnings, you're not interested in matching frequency with other people to find connection. You're only really interested in resonance. And this is very different because resonance is not something that you really move into. It's something that just is. So I hope you enjoyed that simple yet revolutionary content from the masters. I hope that it has ignited more curiosity in, in you and more of a sense of excitement and enthusiasm for the shift in consciousness that is occurring on our planet. It doesn't need to be as cataclysmic as we all sense it could be. It is a completely new way of viewing and experiencing more possibilities, more life and more potential within us.
If you would like to see more of that seminar, you can find it for free on, on our website, rebeccadawson.com on the Explore page. And the entire series, it's a four part series, is available for free here for your viewing on YouTube. I shall put the links in the description box below. So thank you for joining me and I'm wishing you a beautiful day. <music>